Akechi Mitsuhide is the most infamous betrayer in all of Japanese history who was responsible for the Honoji incident that resulted in the death of Japan's first great unifier, Oda Nobunaga. His ambitions were obviously great and his boldness unmatched. Yet in a mere number of weeks after taking power in Kyoto, he would be defeated at the Battle of Yamazaki when faced with the forces of Hashiba Hideyoshi, soon followed after by his own death. The Battle of Yamazaki itself is one of my favorite conflicts throughout the Sengoku Jidai because it showcases a massive turning point for the nation, and also a sliver of a chance for what could have been a very different future for Japan had Mitsuhide won. This is all stuff I want to talk about when I eventually make my In Defense of Akechi Mitsuhide video. Now, there have been all sorts of debates and theories over the years of how Mitsuhide could have won, as today's armchair historians like to bring up a plethora of factors and what-if scenarios. But what I want to show you here today is how the game Nobunaga's Ambition Sphere of Influence handles the topic, of how Mitsuhide could have been victorious at Yamazaki, and what the player has to do to ensure this. This is one of the most difficult starts in the game, and if you do not play it correctly, you will suffer the same fate as Mitsuhide, with a total and utter defeat by Hideyoshi. Yet, the game does give you an interesting questline to follow to help ensure you achieve victory. This is just a fun extra video I had the idea to make while I was putting together my review for Nobunaga's Ambition Sphere of Influence Ascension a couple weeks ago. Because not only did I have to repeatedly try it in order to get it right, but also it does show a unique take on how Mitsuhide could have won, mixed with real history and a fair bit of speculation. So, going forward from here, this video is going to be a bit of an unscripted let's play, where I take you through how Mitsuhide could have won at Yamazaki. And also, for everyone watching this who plays Nobunaga's ambition, sphere of influence, and struggles with this difficult start, this is for you on how to do it right. So, here we are in Nobunaga's ambition, sphere of influence. I'm just going to record myself playing this here show you how it's done. I'm sorry for any other audio in the background or clicks of my, my mouse. I'm still trying to set this all up because I think at some point I do want to start maybe streaming on Twitch or something. Anyways, let's, uh, let's jump in to a new game here. Now, the important thing about this is that you're going to need to have um, one of the DLCs, the Fateful Clash 1582. Um, this is the one that starts right after uh, the incident at Honoji because uh, you have the clash between, of course, Hideyoshi and uh, Mitsuhide. Then, of course, you have the Shibata and the Tokugawa. Um, it really is a very interesting start date and I think really a great point in any game that would be a great place to start because there's so much going on. Um, but let's, uh, let's, let's start in the Fateful Clash. I will say, if, if you do have... Um, Nobunaga's Ambition, Sphere of Influence, uh, Ascension, this comes included with the game. So you, you won't have to uh, buy a DLC extra or anything. Uh, it, it just comes right with it. But if you just have base Sphere of Influence, this is a, a DLC. I think it's like only a, a couple dollars, though. It's not it's not really that much. Not too expensive. And it, like I said, it is, it is worth it. Um, so you jump in. Uh, you want to play as Mitsuhide, of course. So we're going to choose the Akechi. I'm not going to bother with any of these other uh, difficulty things here. It doesn't really matter that much to me. Uh, quests, everything on, yeah, normal. Okay, and uh, we are going to confirm. And it's going to play a cutscene right away. I'm just going to let that play. ぜひに及ばず。死の
about this. All right, so Nobunaga is dead. Uh, Mitsuhide has uh, slain him, or at least led to his death and suicide. Um, now, I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want to actually read these or, or just uh, click through them and have you guys, if you want to actually read them, you can pause the video. Um, maybe I'll read a few of them here. Uh, though Mitsuhide Akechi had slain Nobunaga uh, Oda at, at Honoji Temple and usurped uh, the throne of Japan's ruler, uh, he ran into trouble afterwards. His friends of many years, whom he had expected to be his ally, Fujitaka Hosokawa, became a Buddhist monk and refused to aid him. Furthermore, uh, though Mitsuhide's close ally in uh, Yamato, uh, Junke Tsutsui, appeared cooperative for a time, the man cut all ties once returning to his home castle. And if to finish him off, a report bearing atrocious news came to Mitsuhide's attention. So this is just a dialogue here. Um, I think they're just talking here about how uh, the Hashiba are, are going to be coming, coming back. Like I said, if you want to read through the dialogue here, go ahead and you can just pause the video and read through it. I'm not going to click through it really fast, so at least you can get a chance to read it. The big thing, of course, is that Mitsuhide needs to get the Hosokawa and Tsutsui as, as allies for, for the battle ahead, because he knows a fight is coming. Um, yeah. So yeah, in, initially it seems like he was anticipating uh, Shibata Katsui to be his main threat. Of course, uh, the Shibata were up in Eichizen and they were fighting the, the Uesugi, but uh, now it appears, of course, that... Um, Hideyoshi is on his way back from the west at, at record speed, and he's going to have to face uh, Hideyoshi. Alright, so right away you're going to get the quest, the Battle of Yamazaki. And uh, yeah, Mitsuhide Akechi, who killed Nobunaga Oda at Honoji, has begun to walk the way as a ruler of the world before him. Another man with the same ambition appears like lightning. Uh, so this is, of course, you're going to get the quest to raise both your, your trust with the Hosokawa and Tsutsui. Uh, you want to get the trust up high, so then they will come and aid you when the actual Battle of Yamazaki occurs. <laughs> That's a great voice. Okay, so right away, um, of course, you're here. The Tsutsui are down here. The Hosokawa are up here. The first thing you want to do before anything else is go right into your uh, Employer Ronin. You're going to click on that. And you have a bunch of options here. Uh, you can see there's stats also down here. Um, what you want to do is, of course, choose this guy. This guy is, well, he's got terrible <laughs> leadership and valor, but he's got fairly good uh, intelligence and, and political skill. Um, so we're going to choose uh, Tinkai Nankobo. Yeah, we're going to recruit him. I'm actually curious who he is. I'm going to actually... Oh, also, make sure to turn on all these. Yeah, that's great. All these extra details. Um, but I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to get one of the officers. Uh, Tenkai. I just want to see what his history is. Okay, he was a Tokugawa retainer, Buddhist monk of the Tendai sect who taught at Mount Hiei. He became an advisor to Ieyasu and earned the name the Black Robe Chancellor. Some believe he was Mitsuhide. So some believe he was actually Akechi Mitsuhide. I, I remember talking to uh, Shogo from Let's Ask Shogo, where there was a story of Mitsuhide being a, uh, a monk after the events of Yamazaki, I think it was. Anyways, so going through this, um, I'm not going to do any of the other normal clan um, business here because I'm just showing you how to get to Yamazaki, how to succeed at Yamazaki. Of course, if you were playing through this, there's all sorts of things you could be doing to build your clan up. Um, in terms of the actual battle itself, none of it really matters. The battle itself is kind of a scripted event um, based on how it goes. So I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, I'm just going to focus on the things that you have to actually do to win at Yamazaki. So let's start with the uh, diplomacy. Um, you can kind of do this sort of two different ways, but it doesn't really matter. I like to go up here, and I'm going to appoint Mitsuhide 
to uh, work as a diplomat for the Hosokawa. He's got that diplomat trait. Uh, he's got amazing political skill, so that's that's really good to have. You're going to throw him in there, and you see he's going to slowly move up their trust in you. They're, they're, uh, they're already interested in working with you, and having Mitsuhide work to improve that will hopefully get them involved. So let's put that there. And then down here with the Tsutsui, we're going to employ uh, Tinkai to do that. Um, he's got a diplomat skill as well. He's not as good as Mitsuhide, but he's good enough that it'll, it'll help things move along. We need him to do this. If you do not have Tenkai, this will not work. You will not be successful unless you're just an amazing, you know, player of the game and know how everything works in and out uh, and somehow can, can win the battle. But otherwise, this is a must. You must have Tenkai. You must uh, use him here. And you must follow what I'm about to do uh, throughout the coming months here in, in the game because it's very important in order to ensure that you get both the, the trust of the Hosokawa and Tsutsui up to 40 for the battle. Now there is an additional thing you can do here. You can give a treasure. Um, if you're playing in Ascension, because I know Ascension is similar, uh, this, this pretty much works the same way if you're doing it in Ascension. However, um, you don't start with a treasure in Ascension, I believe. You can buy treasures from, from the merchant, the traveling merchant, but uh, otherwise treasures, um, you start with one in, sphere, in base Sphere of Influence. I'm going to give uh, a treasure here, this, this horse, I'm going to give it to the Tsutsui. Um, be warned, so this, this increases, you know, their interest from, you know, interested to friendly. Um, I think treasures work a little different in Ascension from how I was doing it. I could be completely wrong. Be careful if you're playing this on Ascension, because if you give a treasure, it may make them friendly and you'll actually stop improving relations with them. It's like there's a difference between interested and friendly, and it, it will completely screw up all of your uh, advancements in diplomacy towards them. So be, be warned of that, but it is a good way um, still, at least in base sphere of influence, to help kind of boost that along, that uh, growth of uh, interest and, and trust. I gave that to him. Okay, like I said, I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to click, you know, go along with the month. I have it on uh, on three speed, I believe. Yep. Okay. So he, uh, they got my gift. Yep, he's, uh, he's thankful for it. Okay. Yep, not much is happening. Mm, there's still Ronin in my, my area. Okay, so... Uh, let's take a look and see how diplomacy is going up here. Okay, so the next he's going to be going from 15 to 29. That's good. And down here, um, he's going to go from 14 to 27. Okay, both good. We're not going to touch either of them. We're going to let them continue to do their work. I'm not going to move them or anything yet. Let's go another month. Now, I'm pretty sure in, in uh, actual history by this point, Mitsuhide was actually back by this point. I think the story says that it was like a two-week march back towards uh, Kyoto. So this is a bit, you know, ahistorical, but uh, it at least gives you some time to prepare for the Battle of Yamazaki. Alright, uh, let's look again now. Alright, so he's at 21. He's okay. So this is the important thing. Remember, we gotta get our, our um, reputation with them to 40. So he's gonna go actually over 40. And if you see down here, he's just going to go under 40. So this is the extremely important part where you want to actually switch them. So I'm going to relieve him. Confirm. I'm going to come up here. Come on. Uh, there we go. Relieve him. Confirm. And we're going to move them. So Mitsuhide is going to come down here. And look at that. Going from 27 to 40. Okay. And we're going to go up here again. Going to point Tenkai up there. 29 to 40. So there we go. Now they're both going to go and we're, they're both going to get to that level hopefully right before um, the actual event, the battle of you know Yamazaki uh, triggers in the game. So once again we're going to do that, click go, not doing anything else. Okay, look at that, it's building up and it should hit, there we go, okay. He talked up the Tsutsui and now they can request reinforcements, great, yes, okay. Accomplish that part of the, uh, the task, the quest, and right away we should also get um, the Hosokawa. There we go. Perfect. So both of those triggered, and now the Battle of Yamazaki will occur. 
Um, if you only get one of them, it will not. You'll, you'll not be able to win win the battle. So it's good that we got both of them. The Hashiba army has returned uh, near the capital in one of the fastest feats of military mobilization in history. Yeah, like I said, I think it was actually the story. I think says that it was actually faster than how the game portrayed it, but still pretty fast. Since they had an unscratched and large army, the power players around the capital who'd toyed with the idea of helping the usurper uh, Mitsuhide Akechi instantly allied with the Hashiba. Without allies at his back and Hideyoshi's blinding speed, Mitsuhide wasn't ready to meet him in battle. So this is just dialogue here between uh, Saito Toshimitsu here and um, Mitsuhide. Once again, um, it's just kind of some dialogue. I'm going to click, click through it here. If you want to read it, feel free to pause the, uh, the video and read through it. So this is where he's uh, getting the idea to take uh, Mount Tenozan. Remember anything about the Battle of Yamazaki, Mount Tenozan was very significant because it was uh, contested and really whoever held it was going to have the advantage and the Hashiba held it. Alright, here we go. Face the battle of Yamazaki. I hold an event battle? Yes. I suppose... I wonder what would happen if you didn't hold the event battle. Alright. Face the battle of Yamazaki. Um, right away. Men, heed my call. We head for Tenozan Mountain. We will pass its peak and come down on the Hashiba main unit in one fell swoop. The assault will bring an end to this battle, and I will become Nobunaga Oda of the New World. Mitsuhide Akechi moves towards Tenozan. Um, be wary. Now that's considered a... That is actually a battlefield quest, sort of. So basically, you gotta get Mitsuhide up here. It doesn't really do a good job of illustrating where this all has to happen. You have to move Mitsuhide up to this kind of different colored area of grass up here very important you bring him up here as soon as he reaches this area the next event will trigger if you do not get him up to there in a timely manner um, the actual battlefield quest may fail and they'll just kind of ruin the event for you so that's the most important thing um, so there's a number of different ways to play this battle out I, I'm sure there's several different ways you can win this but um, what I like to do, of course, is get all my units together. We're too spread out right now. I don't think you need to necessarily handle these guys uh, over here by themselves. As you'll see later, um, the Keda will actually attack you from down here. They'll come up. So it's really important you don't get you know, everybody separated. You want everybody to stay together. So I'm going to start by moving this guy up here. I'm going to move uh, Itsukide over there. Move this guy over there. Um, I'm going to move uh, Suda's unit over here as well. Uh, these guys. So I got Shigemoto, Mizo, I have Toshimitsu, Saito, and I have uh, Sadayuki uh, Atsuichi. I'm gonna move them all over here as well. Um, this is something I did actually notice was different between Spear of Influence and Ascension, is these two units. These two units in um, Ascension will just kind of stay here. They won't advance or move or anything, but in Spear of Influence, in, in Base Spear of Influence, uh, Kiyohide Nakagawa and uh, Ukan uh, Takayama will both chase after you. They'll both come down and they'll, they'll, they'll not let these units necessarily get away. Um, I'm still going to move them because I want them to link up, but just be wary, these guys probably are going to follow. Um, so let's see how this goes. Also, watch out for your abilities. You want to make sure you use abilities. And I'll, I'll talk through the best ones as well. But uh, let's hit go and, and get uh, the units together here. So we're trying to get out of that. They're hitting us in melee here, but we're, we're moving out. Okay, we're, we're, we're separating. Let's look over here, okay. Uh, make sure he engages, because we don't want him to go too far out. I want to bring these up. Get Mitsuhide up there as quick as possible. Alright, he hit the mountain. 
Okay, so you have uh, Kuroda Kanbei here talking. Um, this is a, a bit of dialogue between them. Yeah. So Kuroda wasn't expecting Tsukide to come with such force at uh, Tenozan. If you want to like read it once again, feel free to pause it. Not necessarily that important of dialogue. I'll read the important stuff. Um, okay, so we have the next part of the quest. That's good. Okay, so the rest of it will pretty much trigger on its own now. You won't have to worry about necessarily doing anything else in particular. Okay, um, they're doing something. I'm gonna increase my defense there. Alright, make sure we get Mitsuhiro in the action. This guy up into the uh, Keep pulling them back. Eventually, we're going to get to a point where we're going to be surrounded eventually. Okay, here we go. Next part of the event here. Um, the Tsutsui are debating joining. Though Junke Tsutsui was the lord of the land of Yamato, getting there was no easy task for him. Due to the death from illness of his father, Junsho, uh, he inherited his clan at the tender age of two years old. Uh, from there, the opposition of his bitter enemy, Hizahide Nagamasa, brought him uh, tribulation after tribulation, even seeing him chased from his own lands. Uh, these experiences taught Junke uh, endurance and cautious diplomacy, causing him to return to uh, uh, leading his land after uh, Hizahide's fall from grace. Okay, and this is some more dialogue here, where he's considering, do I join, do I not? He wants to have caution, he's not really sure. Uh, he's, he'd make the right choice if he does ally with Mitsuhide. Um, he's getting told the Battle of Yamazaki has begun, uh, and that Mitsuhide is pushing on Tenozan. Okay, so he's gonna rush up to try to get there. Uh, he's, he's still just not really sure he wants to join yet, but don't worry, we have our, our uh, diplomacy with them at 40, so he will join. Eventually. Yeah, it is said that in the Battle of Yamazaki, uh, Mitsuhide Akechi went ahead and deployed um, in uh, Horagawa pa Yeah, Horaga Pass, my bad. Uh, asking Junke to help and effectively keeping him. Uh, his hands tied. Eventually, Junke was interpreted to have been simply passively watching the Battle of Yamazaki at Horaga Pass, making the name Horaga Pass synonymous with passive observation. Okay, After the battle. Your units up. Uh, if you look up top, don't be alarmed by the by the difference in numbers. Uh, like I said, reinforcements will come. This is going to eventually change. Um, let's get DCP to start sniping. That's a very good ability he has. Do range damage. Okay, he's hitting melee. Let's push, pull him out. That is no good. Oh, he's about to die. Yeah, I'm, I accidentally didn't look close enough at what's going on there. Oh, that was only him. Alright, we're doing good actually. My bad. Okay. So this is where the Ikeda come in. Um, they come in from the bottom and they are... Uh, Dangerous, which is why I, why I brought all my units together. They have a large, large, uh, sizable force. Okay, there is Ikeda Tuneoki. Okay, at the same time, though, the Hosokawa now arrive as well. This will not happen, of course, if you have not gotten your diplomacy up to that point with them. Um, also, Kawa Taroki is not happy with Mitsuhide. Um, he thinks he's a usurper. But uh, at the same time, um, of course, being the fact that uh, Hosokawa Taroki was married to Mitsuhide's daughter, he feels, you know, obligated to come and help his father in law. Yeah, he's gonna come and aid Mitsuhide. Now, this is, this is extremely important. Nope. Oh, okay, we're gonna get this event too. Uh, Tutsui Junke is still conflicted. Um, though he had uh, marched soldiers at Mitsuhide's request for aid, only to return uh, them time and time again, uh, he had decided that the best course for the Tutsui clan uh, to take uh, was to ally with Hideyoshi. However, uh, even after the decision, Mitsuhide continued to persuade him in a variety of ways. 
the Akechi army is putting up. Once again, it's a dialogue um, telling him how the battle's going. Evenly matched battle at the moment. Still not sure what to do. Okay, and there we go. The Hosokawa have arrived. And there's okay, the Kizui. Not the Kizui. There's the Ikeda. Okay, so gonna move up the Hosokawa unit. They have a ton of troops, which is gonna help. Um, so that's going to I'm going to pull all these guys over now to help take on these this unit here. Um, once again, the Ikeda unit is going to push up from this direction. Um, let's do... Just got to make sure we take out these units here in a timely fashion because we don't want them to inflict too much damage on us. That would be so Everybody up. Okay, there is the Ikeda. I'm going to turn these two units this way to help fight the Ikeda. Um, get uh, Hosokawa in there right away. Um, yeah, they are pressing melee. So that's dangerous. For those of you who don't know, melee in um, melee attacks in Sphere of Influence are extremely dangerous because you take way more damage from them than you can range. But uh, things are going pretty good still. Okay. Yep. So this is the Tutsui are now gonna come and aid us. Um, yep. In the southern part of the battlefield, we have the Tutsui clan will answer Sir Mitsugide's call for aid. Everyone, the Hashiba are our foes. Charge. There they are. Now you can command them as well. Um, another thing to mention, if, if uh, at least I, I know from a strength on Ascension, um, if you only get one of them, once again, you're probably going to lose, but if you only get one of them, you can't command them. If you get both of them, you can actually command them. Right, we're doing pretty good. We're still hitting them and mailing them back off from that. Um, you can't have to die. There we go. Okay. Push up, then get everybody to knock out these two units. We're eventually going to get hit from, from up here in the north, and one of these units are going to come up on us. Yep, there we go. Almasa Hori. Let's turn the that way, let's turn this guy. Um, yeah, this is... Like, bring the... Uh, okay, there. Everybody's still forcing down. Uh, Kyogide. There's really one important ability you want to keep uh, kind of on standby, and that is um, this one here, Brandish, uh, who uh, Muneaki Yagi. Uh, it's super, super good. Um, we'll use that against Hideyoshi when we eventually invade and when we eventually engage uh, Hideyoshi. Hideyoshi. Want everybody to take on Hideyoshi. It is time. Pause it, make sure everybody's on it. Um, yeah, you want to make sure the one ability you want to use is that brandish one that I showed. That will just do tons of damage. We gotta wait because we can't use it. We can't use it yet. We need 30 bars on top. We're gaining it. I should have done more sparing with my numbers here. We can still do this, obviously we have the numbers, but that brandish will make it happen quicker. Alright, she can motor to pull out. Get 
this, the massive turnaround with the Akechi beating Ashiba at Yamazaki. Coming down Mount Hinozan. Hino hit them. Tiger. So that can be pretty devastating if you're not ready for it, because it, it really just it screws everybody up. Everybody's confused. Alright, uh, another unit lost. That's okay, we still have advantages here. Big thing we don't want to lose, Mitsuhide. Um, he's, he's extremely important here. If, he, if Mitsuhide goes down, uh, the battle's lost. Okay, we're losing tons of guys here because they're pulling us into melee. I'm gonna pull Mitsuhide back. I want to lose them. Okay, this is <laughs> we're still gonna win, but this is this is way more uh, close than I, I imagined. Um, it's gonna throw. Yeah, it's gonna throw him into melee. Yeah, this is this is closer than I wanted it to be, but still the numbers were obviously the win this. There we go. Never got to use the brandish, but just keep that one in mind, it really helps. And there we go. We have won the battle of Yamazaki as the Akechi. Um now let's see what happens afterwards. Mitsuhide Akechi's victory at Yamazaki warded off the Hashiba invasion of Kyoto, granting him temporary reprieve. And of course, a guy comes up, uh, Hosokawa Tadaoki is here to talk to him, um, let him through. This is an interesting, you know, kind of dialogue here, so I will, I will read through this one because this is basically what the Nobunaga's ambition sort of uh, canon is for what Mitsuhide wanted with um, killing uh, Nobunaga. Um, in, in reality, we really do not know why Mitsuhide did it. Uh, there's tons of ideas, but no one really has a clear idea why Mitsuhide killed Nobunaga, what his ambition was, what his goal was. Was he just really that ambitious and wanted to, you know, get you know, the land himself? Or was he actually doing it for some other kind of revenge reason for Nobunaga being an asshole to him for so long? We don't necessarily know. Okay, so he's congratulating him. Um, yeah, Hosokawa only want to keep your name alive. And then, uh, yeah, Mitsuhide is asking him, Do you still look at me as a usurper? Why do you think I took uh, Nobunaga's life? Um, Tarohi doesn't know. Uh, Mitsuhide says, Because this land has no need of Lord Nobunaga. Anything he could do, I can do better. And realizing that, I slew him. Once again, I think that's a bit too much for uh, for Mitsuhide. I don't know if he really felt that way. I mean, obviously, no one knows what he felt, but um, I, I don't necessarily believe that he had that that level of arrogance. Um, at least, at least, I don't believe that. I, maybe there's some evidence somewhere to prove he he did. Lord Nobunaga sought to conquer China as well, but as we are now, uh, that is a sheer impossibility. Um, yeah, it's interesting that he's bringing up China because usually that's something that, you know, in a lot of modern, you know, Japanese games, um, they kind of steer clear of the idea of, like, the engine war and all sorts of stuff like that. So the invasion of the mainland is really interesting to bring up here. The warriors of Japan will only fight the king of thieves. Victory in China warns thieves in China. Uh, the negatives of ruling another country far outweigh the benefits eventually rebels will appear. Um, so I, I, I totally agree with, with that idea of, yeah, let's, let's not invade China. Um, yeah, of course, so you stay out of China, my lord? <laughs> this is, this just flips it, it's like, oh, why did you say we're gonna stay out of China? Um, and then he says, no, as I said before, I possess the ability to do anything Lord Nobunaga does. China will see our troops before I die. I don't, I don't get that at all. He just said, no, we're not gonna invade China. We're gonna eventually invade China. I don't, I don't get that. Uh, yet before that, Japan must be remade. Okay. Uh, rather than granting warriors fiefs, all of Japan's land must be ruled by a single king. Okay, so this is really how he wants to transform the country. Very interesting. Um, much time will be needed for Japan to form itself in such a way and for a king to be born. Surviving until such time would be difficult. Uh, and all I can do is provide the nation with a sign showing the right way, one that picks up where Lord Nobunaga left off. I will correct the mistakes of this road and display uh, the true path. If future generations remember that it was Mitsuhide Akechi who had done that, it is enough for me. 
Uh, due to their victory at Yamazaki, many of the daimyo around the capital swore allegiance to the Akechi clan. Um, this is important, of course, so you know you have the Chosokabe and the Mori um, acknowledging him as Nobunaga's successor. Uh, and, you know, the Shibata and... Oh, let me show it in a sec. Uh, the daimyo uh, would once serve Nobunaga became active. Um, okay, so then you have you know new independent lords who are going to start acting out on their own. Um, the road from Mitsuhide uh, was going to be a long and hard one to beat. So this sets up a very interesting situation. He gets the Nobunaga's ambition trait. I'll look at that in a sec. Um, that's very good to have, I imagine. Um, a messenger has come from the Hosokawa clan. Will you grant him an audience? Yes. So the Hosokawa clan are going to swear themselves as a vassal to you. That's going to be huge. That's a really a great thing to have the Hosokawa under you like that. So you're going to consent to that. And the Tsutsui as well are going to be your vassal. Excellent. Uh, and the uh, Suzuki down there are going to be allying with you for 60 months. That's a super long time. Same thing with the Chosokabe, 60 month alliance. Great. Okay. Looking good. Um, so, now the map kind of looks like this. Uh, we still gotta fight the uh, the rest of the Hashiba because we're at war with the Hashiba. Sorry, up here, the Hashiba. Uh, we're at war with them. I think we're also at war with the Shibata, yes. There is no room for negotiations. Uh, but funny enough, the Tokugawa are interested in working with us. That's 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 cool. Um, but yeah, this is a great place to sort of from here. You can really take your expansions in whatever direction you want. If you want to go take out the Shibata, you can. If you want to go take out Hideyoshi, you can. Really, all of it is is whatever you want to do now. You have won the Battle of Yamazaki. Mitsuhide's position position is uh, cemented uh, in Kyoto and. Who, who, who can really oppose him at this point? Um, let's quickly look. I want to know what that Nobunaga's ambition trait is. So let's look at our officers. Traits. Nobunaga's ambition. Um, it's an S tier one. Um, this ambition knows no bounds. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you know what the Nobunaga's ambition trait actually does, uh, please leave a... Uh, Leave a message in the comments, because I, I don't actually know what it does on the battlefield. I don't play as the Oda enough to know what the Nobunaga's ambition trait does. <laughs> but yeah, Mitsuhide is, is very, very strong, very strong character. Um, and yeah, you have a, a, a great opportunity now to conquer the rest of Japan. Uh, become Shogun yourself. And really, you know, lead the nation. So yeah, that is the interpretation that Nobunaga's ambition puts forth of you know, not only how Mitsuhide could win the Battle of Yamazaki, but going forward, you know, what the future would look like had he won the Battle of Yamazaki. Um, I think it's fascinating, and of course I hope this helped anybody who does play Nobunaga's Ambition and, and has struggled in the past with this start uh, date and playing as Mitsuhide. Um, like I said, this is a DLC start date, uh, a, the uh, Fateful Clash for uh, Sphere of Influence, the base game, but if you have Ascension, it comes already with the game. So really it just depends. They are slightly different depending on, on what uh, which game you're playing, but for the most part, if you follow what I what I show, that, that will get you through it. Um, and yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, I eventually want to make a In Defense of Akechi Mitsuhide video, just like I made that In Defense of uh, Imagawa Yoshimoto video. I had a lot of fun making that, so I'm looking forward to doing something similar with uh, Mitsuhide and, of course, many others. Um, but yeah, uh, this is just a fun little extra video. Um, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this one, please uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell uh, if you, once again, enjoyed it and found it to be uh, most interesting.